All right, Robert, ahead of the next interest rate drop announcement, which is anticipated to be perhaps half a point, market is picking up. I mean, fall market, typically we see increase in sales and prices, but uh, October is going to be quite a surprise based on the preview of the chart that I've seen for you. And, you know, things are just moving along. So Robert, where do you feel the market might be headed in the next couple of months? Well, right now it's, it's, it's stalled, it's paused. Everybody is waiting, buyers and sellers. Now, we identified a long time ago five groups. First time buyers are sitting on the sideline. Uh, last time sellers might be for sale or might be waiting till next spring because they think they can get more money. The trade-up buyer is trying to see if he can buy something. The thing that I've noticed recently on our new uh, Realm MLS system is um, even though we've had around 6,000 sales, we've got 1,200 conditionals that have been reported but not fulfilled. Now, they'll take anywhere from 2 to 15 days. There are only about 5 or 6 that are 23 or something or other across the whole uh, Metroplex that are uh, sold conditional on the sale of the buyer's property with an escape clause. But um, there's lots of things happening below the surface. And uh, I had thought things were going to kick into gear quicker last month, this month for sure, which they have not. But as we'll see in our first chart, things are much better than they were in a negative context. Um, and from there, we look at inventory, we look at what does that mean in months and what's the pace of the market and what should that mean for prices now in the future? All right. Uh, so let's navigate through that on this episode of Real Estate Chat, and we're going to load it up here. And uh, of course, the link to this, well, I mean, the link to Robert's website is in the description. So if you'd like to see a more detailed view of these charts, visit www.unclebobexplains.com. Let's start here with the sales it's figures. Our so idea on sales, sales where they're pounded on top of each other. And here we are. You can see October as a bright light at 6,000 units traded. And compared to uh, the last couple of years, which have been around 5,000. So it's uh, a big change in ch diff you know variation from the average price. Instead of being 30 to 35% that we've seen all the way along this whole year, we're now at, uh, what is it, 19 and change to 24 and change below the average. So this is still lousy. But it's tremendous improvement by a third from uh, what we have been seeing for the last many, many months. So what does this indicate? Well, it could be a blip or it could be the start of a trend. My bias tells me it's the start of a trend that I've been waiting for for uh, two and a half months. I feel that uh, July was the bottom. And what the difference, I think, is, is the huge volume of inventory uh, with a big gap in the very same thing in the very same neighborhood. Maybe there's seven houses for sale when normally there's two. And there's a variation of 20 to 25% between what the guy who's absolutely desperate and maybe has a little bit of a nuisance factor affecting his property doesn't show too well. And what uh, the opportunist who's trying to realize on a, uh, an investment is hoping to get for his property. Like a big gap in prices that so buyers don't know what to make of it. And so they're going going around now and they're they're picking off the low hanging fruit. The the person in each neighborhood, each market niche, each type of home home is selling. That's why there's six thousand units trading. Um, and if you look at them, you'll see that they are the very best deals. Either it's brand new on the market that's come on at an advantageous price and probably got seven offers on it, just like in the boom, and sold for more than their asking price. Or someone who's been reducing and reducing and reducing after 62 days, they canceled it and started again. After 62 days, they did it again. And they're just sick and tired and fed up and they see the winter coming and they're saying, what if nothing changes? They can't see ahead. They're not being advised to hang on, that it's not costing them that much to gain $100,000 by waiting another month, but they have to sleep at night. They aren't sleeping at night, so they got to do something, get this problem off the shelf. So they're selling. All right. So here's a couple of questions for you, Robert, based on the and on that and our Real Estate Chat viewers. Uh, who, for those of you who are new to this channel, make sure you click subscribe so you don't miss any of the news. And if you've been watching us, click like if you like this episode. So... 
there have been sales, obviously. And I mean, obviously, we, we never hit zero sales. Like there's been a constant in terms of what's been happening. It's just, except it's just not been as high as we recently expected. All of a sudden, what Robert here is projecting is the a new trend, an upward trend starting out. Could this be, I mean, there were buyers that had to buy anyway, but now we're seeing a bit more of these. Are these is, would this be considered, Robert, the early majority of buyers who realize, as you said, nothing's going to change. Things will probably continue to improve. I know that there are some watching this that will be like, you know, what improvement? The economy is this, joblessness is that. But I mean, you can't, I mean, obviously you can't make up a trend like this. So what's the mindset of these buyers? And when these buyers, when this wave of buyers continues on, we've got winter months where the sales should be slower. What can we anticipate for the spring? Will it be a return to normal at that point? Yeah, this is why I always use the 10 year, five year. Um, as a comparator, because, uh, and I've added a few years, I've got the 16 year chart uh, that I'm using as a comparison and the 20 year average, which the market has changed tremendously in 20 years. But if we put all these four together, we'll get a, a, an idea of where we are. So compared to where we were at 30% off, now we're 20% off. So that's a drastic improvement. As I said earlier, it's either a blip or according to my feeling, it's the start of a trend. Now, it will taper off in December, in January, because it always does. But the, the, the reason for it tapering off is people have other things to do. They don't want to close the deal in January and February, so they don't buy in December and November because there's a 60-day lag. But there are people who are buying properties for other reasons than occupying themselves. And if they see rates come to a, a level where by the time it closes, if they get another quarter, half come into play, then it may make sense as an investment that we see re, uh, reflected in the news about why purpose-built rentals are so uh, attractive to um REITs and to developers because they have market rents. They can come on the market at full rent, not depressed rent, as any kind of a new rental property can here. We see also the provincial governing looking quite favorably on turning a single family dwelling into three units. And four units, if you have a lane or a big enough driveway that you can put a garden home out the back. So there's a lot of different reasons why if you can bring a new unit onto the market and get market rent for it, that it will make sense to you, especially if interest rates drop down into the threes. So is it a trend? It's too early to say. It's long, it's it's later than I thought, so I have to keep my mouth shut a little bit. But yes, I think it's going to continue on and we'll see another, at least getting up to the five and 10 year average rate of sales. And then the rate of sales will gradually knock down the inventory, the inventory backlog is what's slowing everything down. All right, so let's go look at the inventory now because inventory has been a story and the number of homes doesn't look like there's a shortage of it. So we've got some previous commenters in our previous episodes say, you know what, there is no housing shortage. There is no inventory shortage. In fact, as of you uh, creating this chart, there's over 25,000 uh, active inventory. What do we anticipate over the next couple of months as sales start to increase, inventory should dip a bit. But will we see it hovering at above the twenty thousand uh, invent like at the above the twenty thousand uh, level? Well, I think that the increased level of sales will start to chew into that twenty five thousand, and somebody who's got their property on the market saying, "Oh, I think its price is going to rise in the future," they may withdraw it because they're not getting anything on it now. So they'll take it off and start again on uh, February the fifteenth. Okay. Um, I was surprised to see there be this level. I don't work all out in 905, but still 65% of the action is in 905. And um, the condos are sort of the condo problem. Nobody cares. It's an inventory problem that nobody wants to even worry about, except for the dear uh, investor, one, one junior spec uh, or, uh, you know, first-time investor who's bought himself a condo that's 
too small to live in and can only be rented. And now he's suffering on the rent because he bought it with an open mortgage or the variable rate mortgage. And now that price is made, is squeezed all of his monthly profit into it. So he's contributing every month and he's wondering whether this is what he should do. But eventually all these things will sort themselves out. And will we see it come back down to, you can see that the 16 year average is 17,000. So we're still like 50% too many houses for sale. And we've had sales below average for so long and that's allowed them to accumulate. But if you look at our chart from the very bottom in the last year, we were at 20,000. So it's not unprecedented at this time of year. So it's just, just gonna work itself out. This will be a cushion and as those properties either are withdrawn or sold, they will fall out of inventory. And that's why we monitor the months of inventory. As sales go up, then the balance changes. That's the next chart that we have that shows the change in inventory dropping more drastically and months of inventory dropping more drastically than the actual number of inventory because the sales went up, which helped it out. So at... Uh, uh, 421 this morning it was uh, 418 so it's about the same um, we're heading in a direction of back to uh, the five year which is around two and i think most people probably would be happy around three um, we're going we're aiming towards it it's 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 not easy right now to be for sale it's not easy because you get the time when nobody is looking at the property Nobody seems to care. There's no response to open houses. People walk through and they say, oh, well, who cares? And then you get an offer and it's a lousy offer. It's like 20% less than what you thought. The guy has real audacity. The buyer has audacity to come in with it. And all the salesmen look so glum and say, well, you know, we haven't had any other offers. And you feel very alone. It's uh, it's uh, it's an awkward time. It's an well, awkward we are time. Seeing, also, I mean, as we... The interesting thing is we are seeing, like as you said, sales are happening with the, with the best houses that are listed on the marketplace and the ones that show well, staged, priced well, and executed properly. So uh, well, this Robert... is the, when the next month's results come out, unfortunately, it's about three weeks from now um, that start saying exactly what I'm telling now. That, people say, well, maybe I better uh, better not wait. I better at least get off the sidelines. I better start thinking about it. And whether we get a half or two two quarters in the next uh, uh, two uh, Bank of Canada announcements, it doesn't really much matter. Um, if we get a half, then unfortunately, bad news for the economy means that good news for interest rates coming down. So that means that the Bank of Canada is sensing bad economic news generally. So that's that's not a help for us. We're not we're not in this alone in the real estate business. Well, there's always going to be the car business. Everything is related. Anyway, it's going to be always so as those anyway. things. Yeah. yeah. As those things straighten themselves out, we say, what's the impact on prices? So I'm not going to stick my neck out at all. I just looked at this thing, which tells us what happened in the last 23 years. And in the last 23 years, month to month, September to October was up 1.67%. Uh, in the 21 years that were up years, that was the rate. And in the average over the 23 years, it was 1.33% because there was two down years. So I'm going to say that this is going to be a price up year. And I've just taken that 1.67% and added that on top of last month's 11.07. And now we're up to $11.25 million. So um, this, if we put it onto our the next one, which is the, the prices chart, we see that depending on exactly where it ends up, we're either going to be the second or third highest October because everything is all bunched into the other. You can see them one, two, three, four right there. And we're following the pattern. And um, it were 15 and a half, 16% off the peak at the very uh, left-hand side. Um, and in the last 12 months, we're only 4% off what the best month was in the last year, which was May. So, um, is it a recovery? Maybe. Is it terrible? No. Uh, we need the sales to recover. And when the sales recover, then everything happens. And if, uh, interest rates drop, sales will recover. Prices will move up. Inventory will move down. 
And uh, nothing special or uh, standing about that. It's just, does anybody have confidence that all those things will work together? And will they work at the tail end of this year? Will they work in uh, February, March, April of next year? Uh, will it take till the summer? But uh, will prices drop by a further 30%? No. We're down by uh, almost 20. Will they drop another 10? No. And if they do, you're not going to like it. Well, there you have it. I mean, if you're in the market still and you've been ever since we've started talking about this, you've been uh, wondering, you know, where when is the best entry point? When should I enter the market? Uh, there's now been a blip upwards in October. And as Robert put it, like in the, in the winter months, you don't expect uh, the market's going to be roaring again because of for obvious reasons here in the Toronto and greater Toronto area real estate market. But gear up for spring because, Robert, we've got several rate drops anticipated unless something else happens that you know knock on wood would you know be a negative impact on everybody if such things were happening and mm -hmm. unimaginable things could happen uh i guess never bet against the market because this is just the way things are designed inflation is going to do its thing the market dynamics of decreased inventory increasing demand and increasing prices is going to happen and at, at some point in the future we're going to have an episode where we're going to say you missed exactly where you should have been buying if you wanted to buy a home. Well, it, the the reason everybody is pausing and not doing something right now, not following your advice right now, is because they're saying, well, what if there's a terrible war in the Middle East and, and the uh, participants over there, OPEC, all fall apart and they flood the world with oil and the price drops uh, tremendously. And now everybody's uh, uh, fuel costs have gone down, heating costs have gone down. But for a very terrible reason, like, is that when you want to take a, an, an adventuresome step or do you want to wait and see what happens after that uh, terrible happening? So it's it's complex and you, you can't blame anyone for doing nothing. There you have it. If you have any questions, leave it into the comments and uh, make sure you stay tuned for our next episode. And we'll watch this trend unfold all the way to the spring 2025 market. Thanks for watching this episode of Real Estate Chat. Take care and bye for now. See you later.